Underline Helm, Senator O'Sullivan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Acting uh, Deputy President. And uh, I rise to. Uh, I had intended to speak on uh, other subject matter today, but uh, we're seeing some evolving responses uh, from within the beef uh, supply uh, sector uh, in response to uh, Senator Stirl's report, which was tabled here. <laughs> Uh, yesterday in this place, and I want to once more um, pay credit to Senator Stirl. He happens to be in the chamber, of having chaired a very difficult, long-ranging uh, inquiry into the beef supply chain from a set of references that this Senate uh, provided to him. Um, I think as long ago as, uh, as 18 months, but it was a long and arduous, um, and a very, very thorough, thorough uh, Senate inquiry into the beef supply chain. And uh, his report, uh, which is well supported by our side of politics, uh, and uh, in fact there was no dissenting report put in, so uh, in effect uh, one could say that this is uh, bipartisan, tripartisan. I'm not sure what the reference is once you get past three. Uh, tr trans, trans court, court partisan, what, whatever it is, it, it has the support of all of the elements uh, of this Senate. And there's been some interesting responses, and uh, in the limited time I have, I'll just concentrate on two of them. Uh, the most uh, remarkable, of course, is the response today from the chief executive of ELPA, which is the, uh, the uh, agent's peak body here in Australia. They were the subject of uh, quite uh, pointed um, efforts uh, of the committee uh, because of serious, serious long-standing allegations of corruption and collusion uh, in the marketplace, uh, particularly the sale yards around this nation, where tens of millions of head of cattle uh, transacted uh, every couple of years. So, uh, Mr. Madigan has come out today and uh, criticised the committee, said that he's uh, somewhat uh, uh, bemused and uh, frustrated uh, because uh, the committee has made recommendations that they should review and reform the practices around sale yards um, where we have found and there was clear evidence presented that producers and particularly smaller producers were at a complete disadvantage uh, around uh, collusive and, uh, and I would say corrupt behaviour uh, over a long period of time. And this was all the, the genesis of this was of course uh, what we call the Barnawatha event where nine of these agents, represented by Mr Madigan, uh, boycotted the Barnawatha boycott, it's called, boycotted the Barnawatha sale yards where there were thousands of head of cattle waiting to go to market and they never turned up. Now the Australian, uh, the ACCC got involved and conducted uh, 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 an investigation and of course uh, what were the reasons given by the nine agents? They certainly denied any collusion, they certainly denied any agreement. So number one says, the dog got me lunch. The dog took me lunch and I couldn't go all that way without something to eat. Then another one had a flat tire and the third one, the wipers didn't work on their car and on and on it went. The ACCC reported to us in evidence that there'd been an increase in traffic, in communication between these agents, some of whom had never spoken to each other before. And so for the nine of them, and indeed, I say to you, Mr Madigan, straight down the barrel of the camera, to you, for you to deny that there is collusion and difficulties in the sale yards of this nation uh, is a very rich statement. In fact, uh, Mr Madigan, in evidence, had indicated that he himself had concerns about this in the sale yards. And I'll use his, uh, I'll use his words. In my experience, I've seen buyers talk to one another. Just a little whisper. I've not heard what they've said. I have no proof of it, but I have seen it, he said. They will go up and talk to one another. One will stop bidding and then walk away, and they will then buy the next pen. I have seen that, yes, was his evidence verbatim. Now, of course, recently, as recent as the 28th of August, uh, Mr Madigan uh, had a, uh, a light moment where he said, at no stage did I say that, uh, that since the 70s he had witnessed clues of behaviour at livestock sales. Well, uh, the inconvenient fact for you, Mr Madigan, 
is, of course, it was recorded on the Hansard. On the Hansard. The tapes are here, and if your memory is failing you, you should make a visit down here and we'll make arrangements for you to listen to your own voice. Now it suits the agents. It suits the agents to have no reform. It suits the agents not to have Senate inquiries or anyone else in authority looking at the behaviour in the sale yards. We had a very leading processor in the industry who opened the inquiry, and Senator Stirl will remember this, a magic piece of evidence. Forty years, he said, he had been in the beef industry, and not once had he ever heard, not even in a conversation down at the pub, that there was collusion in the sale yards in this nation. So I say to Mr Madigan, and I say to others in the industry, the more you tell us there's not a problem, because your credibility is in question, the more inclined we are to look more thoroughly again and again until your workplace, until your marketplace is reformed so that small producers around this country are not subject to collusive behaviour. So if he thinks that we in this place are going to roll up into a ball and forget about the recommendations that we've just put through to the minister, then of course he's got another thing coming. And then there's, uh, then there's the Cattle Council of Australia. Dear oh me, I have no friends left in the beef sector, and I suspect nor do you, Senator Stirl, after our efforts over the last 18 months. But the Cattle Council, the Cattle Council represent literally nobody. There are 60,000 producers in this nation and there is evidence that they quite literally represent nobody. There are eight stakeholder groups who wanted to come together and create what I've called a new cattle house. And we have been putting pressure on them. We have been engaging with them to consider that because it was our intention that industry sorted itself. Industry should sort its own problems out because I can tell you the most brutal and inelegant way to resolve any problems in any sector is to have a Senate inquiry make recommendations to resolve it. Now they've come out today. For the last year, they blew the candle out on the cake recently. For the last year, they have been working in what's called a transition committee. A very prominent cattleman and administrator in this country, Mr. Troy Setter, has headed that up. We have in recent months been hearing, we've been hearing snippets of information, antidotal, some of it coming from members of that transition committee to say that the Cattle Council really don't have their heart in it. They want to remain as the Cattle Council. They don't want to commit to the establishment of a much more transparent, a skills-based, board-driven structure that will give these 50 or 60,000 producers around the country a voice. They've come out today and said uh, that they're finally out. Of the closet doors are swung open and they've come out and said, well, actually, closing down the Cattle Council of Australia and creating a new entity would require a lot of work and time. I don't have time in this contribution uh, to be able to uh, articulate all of the points that they've come out in the media today. Well, here's my message to the Cattle Council. I know I'm going to be a few Christmas cards short this year, but here's my message to the Cattle Council. This is the second time recommendations have been made to strengthen the peak body to my own government. The first ones have not been enacted, again, as a result of the work of Senator Stirl and this committee, this Senate committee. Well, we will not rest now. We will not rest. We will persist until you restructure, until you properly operate in a transparent way that proves to your government and proves to your industry that you do represent the tens of thousands of small producers around this country who are getting it in the neck every time big processes or market conditions put them in a vulnerable place put them in a vulnerable place there's been market failure around beef now for 30 years and it has to come to an end the power inequities that exist have to be addressed and i say that the recommendations of the stir report supported by us all 100% not one alteration to the report not one dissenting report, not one qualifying additional report made. I say to my own government, listen up, and I say to industry, listen up. You need to take these recommendations seriously. 
We need to put our shoulder to the wheel and we need to get this back to being a fair, transparent and equitable market environment for so many tens of thousands of Australians who Thank you. make a big contribution you, to our Russell. nation's wealth. Senator